So, a few months ago, we were able to do an exercise with Suffolk Lowland Search and Rescue, together with some field medics from the United States Air Force. It involved having two shrapnel wounds, one to the chest and one to the abdomen. I didn't have much time to prepare, and I made do with some polystyrene wrapped in tin foil and just painted up to make it look burnt and charred. And it kind of turned out alright, but ever since, I've wanted to try a more realistic version. So this is what I thought I'd try next. So for this video, I'm going to make a shrapnel wound using this foam as the shrapnel. Now, I want to make it fairly thick, so it represents a piece of steel rather than something like a piece of tin or aluminium. So I'm going to double it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out roughly the size that I want. I don't really want it triangular in shape, but I do want a sort of high point here and then bring a jagged edge down here. And I actually want it quite long. If I make that the high point, then make it jagged down there and have it curved and this end bent to make it look really distressed. So I'm going to cut it out using this scalpel. There we go. So now I'm just going to use some multi-purpose adhesive. Now I don't want it gushing out of the edges, but I do want to make sure I get good coverage. I just want to fold this over. Now I'm just going to sandwich it in between a couple of old tiles and apply some weight. So now we have our doubled up foam, I'm going to cut it into the shape I want to use. I want to give it a nice beveled edge so I'm going to angle my blade as I'm cutting and alter the tilt of the blade to kind of make a very jagged bevel. So that's my first cut. Just take out a small section of it. want to round about here take out a little nick I want to have that end piece twisted to make it look ripped maybe even make this a little bit more extreme Just going to take this piece off as well, sweep out, that's better. Now we have our piece, I want to go about shaping it, forming that kind of curve. So the first thing I want to do is set the curve that it's going to hold. To do that I'm going to use some old card. I'm just going to cut into it the kind of curve that I want it to hold. it wide enough to keep the foam pinched in place. And just clean out all that junk. Now I'm just going to feed the foam into it 
just going to lift up this, press it in, and then push up the inner line like that. So now we have our piece of jagged foam with a nice little curve in it that we are ready to shape before we colour it. I want it to hold this kind of shape with this quite severely rotated. To set its shape, we're going to use the glue again. This will form a rigid coat once dried, so it will hold the shape we set. So we need a way to hold the shape whilst the glue dries. For this, I find that plasticine works as a perfect temporary clamp. It's moldable, durable, and most importantly, it's reusable. So for this, I'm going to need three, maybe four little stands, and this last piece we can use as a base. This first piece, I'm just gonna to use to hold this end piece in place. I don't want to change the attitude of that part, so this piece of plasticine will hold it in place as I pull around the other parts of the foam. The second I'll use to pull this side back and down a little. And the third I'll use to push that peak forward to get that twist that I wanted. So I've got my clamping system roughly how I want it. So I'll remove that. And now I'm ready to apply the glue and this will eventually dry it and hold everything in place. Now this glue I would describe as having three phases. First is a liquid phase, so we can apply it and spread it or smooth it out. Then in an hour or so, it turns into a flexible plastic affair. But after a week or so, it turns into an almost crystalline substance and quite rigid. But I don't have to wait the week. I can start painting after just an hour. Okay, so now I have it covered. I move the clamp back in. Just going to use that fourth piece of plasticine to pull back the foam just below the twist to really accentuate the top. It's not exactly the vision I had for it, but it has some nice curves on that. So now I'll just leave it for about an hour to dry. next thing I want to do is to start to apply undercoat. Now, although this is going to end up with a metallic finish, I don't want it to be just painted silver. It doesn't look realistic. So what I'm going to do is undercoat it in very dark greys with flashes of all sorts of colours like reds, greens and blues. With this, we're not looking for any sort of design or definition. I'm just after coverage.
trying to make the rear look the same as the front. Now, the edges that I've cleaved off, I'm going to undercoat in pure white because the edges would be fresh, untarnished. They're ripped from whatever structure it was that formed this shrapnel. So when the metallic top coat is applied, it will look brighter. I'm also trying to fill some of those foam air holes. So I'm using the paint as a sort of filler. So instead of letting all this paint go to waste, I'll quickly spin around the foam, pull the clamp away and literally just chuck this color on just to get coverage. the underside to dry a little bit longer and then I'll put the clamp back on to hold it in position, set the whole thing aside for a few days to let it harden and then we can start to colour it in earnest with the metallic paint. So our little piece of shrapnel has had a couple of days to dry and we can pull it out of the cardboard and we can get rid of that. So it's some pretty funky colours. Now all along the edge here, just put some undercoat to base coat it in white and fill in some of those holes. So now I'll leave that to dry. Then I want to continue with some more detailed work. So now I'm going to add my first coat of true colour. I'm going to do the metal of that outer edge. I want to apply this very thick and make sure I cover all of the white along the edge. I'm using acrylic paint for this as it's very affordable and the colours mix well. a nice coat of silver along the edge. Just clean the brush off, I'll dry wipe it. And just add a little bit of water, turn that into a wash. Probably won't even notice this once we've finished. I see no harm in it. I'm not wasting any materials. Now I just need time for that to dry and then we can go on to do the faces. So first off, I'm going to have a practice and a play around on the underside and kind of get a feel for how I actually want it to look. What I want to do first is add some clean water to my palette. And of course, I'm going to want some black, some white, and I've chosen three colors, burnt sienna, yellow okra, and fallow blue. And then of course, along with these, we're using this gunmetal silver and also a metallic copper. So we'll start with some full strength grey. Then just keep adding some colour and paint that colour in with the grey. The reason I'm using brown and blue in the grey is that when I've seen scorched steel, I see a bronzing effect with some very electric blue arcs and I'm trying to mimic that. I want a little bit of okra. Now I do want a few spots and lines of true black, but we're going to use a black wash at the very end for the sooting. I'm just going to take some gunmetal silver I'm going to move 
those over so I'm not going in front of the camera all the time. That's way more blue than I wanted. A small amount of copper, just as you blend it into the silver, you get that nice scorched look. You really want to push out the metallic so you're getting virtually a dry brush effect. I just want to rotate it a little so you can see this little fold here and I'll do that. going in very heavy with the metallic around the edge as that's where the white undercoat of that broken edge sits. Put a little bit of copper in there. All right, and then I'll continue up the length. help with metallics if you keep rotating there is a certain degree of iridescence involved and just glare so I've got a nice coat of multicolored metallics on the back I just want to try a wash of the metallic silver I'll try it on the lower parts first I'm just putting some splodges of silver down and then with water pushing it around quite far the metallic wash creates a nice glazed effect when you get it right. It's better to do a light thin coat as you can always add another layer if you feel your first is too translucent. So that's a nice cover on the rear. I'm not sure you can see it but we've still got nice little flashes of blue and copper, the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna. So now we move on to the main feature and that's the front. And we're going to do exactly the same as we did on the back. Again, I'll start on the base. See, I'm also using the contours from the dried glue. Go back over and chuck in some of the copper. Just keep plodding around, building up the colour and the metallic.
pretty good top coat. Now I want to put some black low lights in, right in some of those crevices, just so everything around it really does stand out. just putting in some black and then dry brushing them out. Okay, so now I'll do the same as I did on the back and do a silver wash. So we've got a nice metallic layer down with a nice silver wash. I'm just going to use what's left of the black and do some sooting. to avoid anything that suggests a brush stroke. It's a matter of just dabbing it on and then dabbing over it. So there's our piece of shrapnel, and now I want to build the wound. To make the exterior skin part of the wound, I'm going to be using Sculpt Gel. So I'll take some part A, and colour it with some flesh tone. Now I add some fair skin flocking, some yellow, some blue, and of course some red. Give it all a quick mix. Then I'll add to my palette an equal amount of part B and part C. Now I'm ready to mix it up, but I just want to degrease my arm with some alcohol. Now I just mix. I'm just going to be doing the outline and a couple of flaps. Once it's nicely mixed up, 
I'll start with the top flat. A slight gap and I'll put a small flap at the bottom here. Just want to do a length comparison. So this top flap will peel up that way and this bottom flap will just jut out a little. Now I'm just going to build an outline from one to the other. the ring. Now just around the edge I'll blend it into my skin. Now this is just the outline of the wound. As you can understand I have only one hand to work with here so to do the interior detail and affix the shrapnel I'm going to need to take this off my arm so I can work with both my hands. So first I need to peel up the flaps and apply some inlay to make this all one piece. Then I can remove it and work on a flat surface. I'm just going to switch over now to what I call the edging tool just to pull back the edges and make it look more jagged to basically push the edge up. Might have to fold over the silicon a little bit letting it grab the tool a little bit and pulling it up to give it that stressed look. going off I'll just go in and I'll pull out this lower flap there again the same with the upper just want to get under the flap and peel it back Got a tiny little hole there. Right, that seems good for now. So I'm going to give that about 10 minutes to completely go off and then we'll move on to do the inlay to make that all one wound that I can take off and work on it flat. All I'm going to use is some pre-coloured Platzil 10. All I've added to this is red and blue pigment. And I'll just put on the same amount of part B Because I'm working on myself, I'm going to use these clips that I have for my microphone and headphones and a pair of laces and use it as a makeshift retractor. One there, one down there. In fact, the weight of that one alone will hold that open. So now I'll just mix. And because we are using Platzil, we have a longer cure in time than if we were working with Sculpt Gel. So we don't have to rush. Now I'll work on the top edge first. In the 
flat seal, I've also added some retarder. So the curing time is a little bit longer. under the flaps right up against the skin I want to form almost a wedge so it will give it a foundation that will naturally hold the flap away from the skin I mean the shrapnel will seal the deal but I do want the flaps to stand away from the shrapnel too it is really starting to feel like it's getting tacky right yeah it's beginning to cure quite rapidly now. to work in small layers but when people have time constraints it's not the best way to work but I like working this way so I'll have a finished wound so when I turn up on site it's just a case of applying it and blending the edges getting to the end of the working time it's getting really grabby I just want to thicken this light area here. So I'll just let that completely cure and then I'll quickly remove it and we'll move on to the next step. So before I go ahead and apply the shrapnel to the wound, I want to add some red blood tissue to the underside of these flaps. I'm going to do that now so you can see it as it will be obscured once the shrapnel's in place. So to make this up, I'm just going to be using a mixture of black seal and sculpt gel. It's a one-to-one -one mix. We'll start by adding a very small amount of sculpt gel part A and then I'll add an equal amount of Platzil 10 part B. As I've shown in my previous videos, if you mix part A of Sculpt Gel and part A of Platzil, they'll start to cure. So I mix A and B, and then B and A, and then put some Sculpt Gel part C on the palette and finally mix them all together. But I do advise that you do a test of your own products first. I'm just going to color this with a little bit of red and then a scratch of blue. Just pop in a bit from the tip. So I want to add a bit more red to that. There we go, it's quite a dirty red. Then I'm going to add a small amount of Sculpt Gel Part B and to that I'll add a small amount of Platzil 10 part A. Just give them a little pre-mix. This is to ensure that I get a good final mix of all the elements. And last I'll put out a small amount of Sculpt Gel part C on the palette. So now it's time to mix them together and once I've done that I'm going to work on the small flap first. Then I'll spin the tile around and work on the larger flap. So here we go. Okay, let's see how we get on with that. I'll quickly spin the tile around. Just 
want to push that up. Lovely jubbly. down just as it starts curing just start poking and prodding it to add some texture and it's always good when you're doing this to keep rotating your tool it helps to avoid any parallel lines they tend to look unnatural looking to make the same mottled effect that we have with our inlay. Right, I'll just spin the tile back. There we go. model effect on this one so I'll leave that to totally cure so now we've got our foundations in place the next step is to actually insert this piece of shrapnel now I want it to sit like this inside the wound so I'm going to be using these clips again this one looks like it will pull back enough under its own weight but that one is going to need some tugging so I'll just use this lace and tuck it under the tile. So again, I'm going to be using a mix of Plat Seal and Sculpt Gel. So I just want to add some Sculpt Gel Part A and Plat Seal Part B to my palette. This time I want to make a very dirty blood colour because this shrapnel could have gone quite deep and brought other colours into the blood. So for this, I want a nice solid colour. I want a healthy quantity of red, a dash of blue, and I'm going to add some brown, about the same amount as the blue. That's a nice dirty blood colour. I might actually want to add some variations in colour, maybe add some extra red if I want some light spots, but I'll be doing that on the fly. Next on the tile, I'm going to put down some Sculpt Gel Part B, and then some Plat Seal Part A, Sculpt Gel Part C. Now we're ready to mix up and then we'll apply. So first off I'm just going to apply some to the bottom edge of the shrapnel. I left the bottom edge as open foam so the silicon should get into all the crevices in the foam and really help to bind it to the wound. So that's going right up in the corner maybe pulling that top edge in a little I'll just do this side first. So I'm using the excess, which is what I would have used on the far side, to really beef up the damaged flesh on this side. bit right down in there there we go once this side is cured I can show you the other side
it's going through its curing process. I just keep prodding it and striking lines through it, just giving it form and definition so it doesn't dry as just a blob. Just kind of prod it, lift it up, drop it down. It gives a very nice stressed, almost explosive damage kind of look. So here we are at the stage where every prod I make remains in the silicon. So this is where I want to put some pock marks in and strike some lines to give that suggestion of almost muscle definition. Bands of muscles or bundles of muscle fibres. Even lift some of the silicon up and stretch it. up onto the shrapnel just go back along peel back that very very top edge and that's it now the shrapnel is now stuck in the wound we've even made some damage definition on one side so I'll apply exactly the same method, flat seal and sculpt gel again. We'll color the whole puddle with a nice amount of red, a scratch of blue, now I'm just going to make a little puddle here and add a little bit more red and that will give us something to make some highlights with. And some brown. And just give that a little mix. And we'll just start by filling up this corner. Peel that top flap back just a little bit. Stick that top flap to the top part of the shrapnel. It does create a nice bit of damage here that will fluff up in a little bit. I'm just using this tool because it's thinner. So I can push it right up That's good. I'm just going to take very small amounts of that brighter red and use it to add highlights. last bit I'm just going to put it behind so we get continuity of colour between the back and the front. That's good. Okay, we're just going to do the same as we did on the other side and keep prodding and poking it. It gives it that damaged look. 
I don't know if you notice this piece I'm working on right in front of the camera. As I'm prodding it, it's removing the shine. It makes the surface so pitted, it just doesn't reflect directly back. We don't want it all like that. We want to create patches that have both high gloss and matte effect. These parts are actually touching the shrapnel. I do want some of them to look like they're peeling away. The suggestion is shrapnel has hit the body with such force that it's almost like an explosion in and of itself. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with that. And the next stage, we're going to use some alcohol activated paint to put in some definition on the skin and some low lights in the muscle tone. I'm just using a raggedy old brush and I just use a syringe with some isopropyl alcohol in it to act as the activating agent and as a thinner. And then I'm just going to apply it to the crevices and the low edges, just adding some darkness. And the great thing about alcohol activated paint is if you apply something and you don't like it, just add a drop of alcohol and dab it off or spread it out. And just try to avoid those high ridges here because those little bits I want to actually stand out. Now I want some strong blood tones because we want more of a spotty speckled effect. Just rotate this. And now I'm going round the edge, just adding some blood to that skin, to all this torn flesh. And I'm just going to go around just there. It's almost like using the paint as a wash. Just try to avoid it forming any geometric sh shapes. Some dots here and there, beautiful. But a line where your brush has been, nope. There we have it. Then we go on to our next step, put it back on and build up the outer edge. I'm going to use Platzil 10 to reattach the wound to my arm. So I quickly dish out some Platzil part A and part B. Then mix and apply to the underside of the wound. I just want to degrease my arm with some isopropyl alcohol. Then apply the wound to my arm and tack down the edges. Once stuck down, I want to build up the outer skin. I want to make it look like the wound and the shrapnel have deformed the arm. So I want it to bulge by the big top flap and around this edge and smooth out the lower line too. So I'll take some Sculpt Gel Part A, colour it with skin tone, give it a little mix and I'll add light tan, red, yellow and blue flocking. Quick mix. Now I'll add 
an equal amount of Sculpt Gel, part B and part C. Mix them all together. I'm going to start by building up the top edge. I'm trying to create a nice sloping bulge and then blend it out into my skin. Got rid of that unfortunate straight line. Just make up some more skin tone sculpt gel for that lower edge. And now I'll just mix. And I want to just buff up this edge. ramp up into this small flap. With the sculpt gel left, I'm just going to run around and just touch up here and there. go in with my edging tool and pull the sculpt gel back and create a nice jagged look. It's feeling like it's starting to cure so I'll spray some isopropyl alcohol over it and go around with a stipple sponge and I'll finish off with a standard sponge just to vary the texture and it removes some of the shine. Lastly, once it's cured, I go around with a clean flat tool and just drag it over the skin, removing some more of that shine. And there we have it. I think that's come out really well. One shrapnel wound. And that's how I do it.